Hey there, welcome to Broadband Deployment News. There's a new report out that shows that for the first time, those on usage-based billing uh, plans for broadband have consumed more than those that are on fixed rate broadband plans, which was a little unexpected. Be right back and we'll look at those numbers. Thanks for joining me, Rick Husey here with Broadband Deployment News. So uh, this is in Next TV, and this is um, so it's here, Broadband Shocker. This is based on a report that Open Vault does. They do this uh, every quarter, where they look at um, at internet users that happen to be flowing through their uh, broadband management equipment, and it's kind of a cloud service that they offer uh, for broadband management, uh, data management. And uh, they do this every quarter. And for the first time, as you see here, usage-based customers now chew through more data than flat rate subscribers do. According to the latest Open Vault report, ISPs may need to find a new way to tamp down consumption on their network. So kind of keep in mind as we're looking at this that um, this is talking about just those uh, those consumers that Open Vault can see. So only those ISPs that are using their service. So again, a cloud-based service. Uh, so this would be ISPs that are trying to manage the, the broadband usage that their customers are doing. And um, that's kind of a that kind of puts them in a separate uh, category. So this does not by any means mean it's exactly the same throughout the country. And certainly if somebody's not implementing broadband usage, then it, it's the wild west and who knows. But, um, so, but this is something that uh, ISPs are doing because there's more bandwidth use than ever. And uh, if this is something that you wanna do, for example, we do have a broadband management solution uh, that can help you track usage and um, implement uh, broadband usage uh, either uh, throttling users uh, if they reach a certain amount of bandwidth per month or billing based on uh, on broadband usage. So uh, a lot of people don't like to hear that, but it, you know, unfortunately it's required sometimes in order to continue to provide good service and then a, a, reasonable, a reasonable price for everyone, uh, which I'll talk about here. But um, so uh, let's take a look at the numbers. So Belying a widely accepted broadband industry precept, usage-based customers in the U.S. actually consume more data than flat-rate high-speed broadband subscribers did in the first quarter, according to the latest report published by Hoboken, New Jersey-based OpenVault. Uh, home Internet customers who pay extra for exceeding certain data thresholds consumed on average 562.7 gigabit gigabytes of data from January through March versus 555.5 gigab gigabytes uh, for subscribers who pay one flat rate for unlimited data. So uh, they've got uh, one of the tables here, and you can see what we're looking at. See, the darker color is first quarter 2022. Uh, then we've got fourth quarter, so that's a year ago, fourth quarter 2022. And then we've got first quarter of this year, 2023. So that's the light blue. And then we've got their averaged weighted data here. And really what we're looking at is the this is average fixed rate uh, broadband usage, and this is average usage-based billing, or I should say fixed rate billing and usage-based billing. And one interesting thing you can see right off the bat is that uh, first quarter versus fourth quarter, so first quarter a year ago versus fourth quarter at the end of last year, went up quite a bit in both cases, and then it's gone down, uh, for, it went down for first quarter 2023. So. Um, yeah, that might be a typical kind of trend. Maybe towards the end of the year, you've got uh, holidays, that kind of thing. Maybe that's why. So that could be something that you see every year, but I thought that was interesting. And then what you're looking at here, again, if you look at, this is fourth quarter 2022. Um, well, actually, first, let's look at uh, first quarter 2022. So you got first quarter 2022. This was your fixed rate billing. These are people that are paying just a flat rate. I should say flat rate billing, probably. Then you've got um, those that are usage-based billing, and you can see that the flat rate folks were using more bandwidth. And a lot of times you would expect that if there's an internet service provider that is not charging for bandwidth use, they just have flat rate pricing for everyone, then they're going to attract people that are going to use more. If there's, let's say there's two different pro providers in town and one has usage-based billing and one doesn't, the really heavy users are going to go to toward the uh, ISP that does not have usage-based billing because they can use as much as they want and they can pay the same as everybody else. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind there. If there's competition, you've got uh, one doing it and one not, you're gonna see people tend to migrate in that direction. Um, then you've got here for uh, fourth quarter 2022, we see that it's the same thing. So you had in uh, first quarter 2022, you had fewer people doing, or usage-based billing was, uh, having less usage from their consumers. 
And the same thing in uh, last quarter of uh, last quarter 2022, you had those that were on flat rate billing were consuming more than those that were on usage based billing. But here again, for the first time in this open vault report, they saw that people that were on fixed rate or flat rate billing were consuming more than those on usage based billing. So um, that is unusual because generally on usage based billing, uh, what you're again, what you're trying to do is make sure that you can um, capture those people that are using the most of your bandwidth so that you can keep the prices a little bit lower for those that are not using as much bandwidth. And if you think about it this way, um, it's also it's also more fair. So think about yourself as a consumer, let's say for water, your water department, and let's say you are a family of two and you, know, you do your normal, normal amount of laundry, um, you don't water the grass, you wash the car maybe once a month if, if you're lucky. Um, and then across the street, you've got neighbors, they've got eight in their family, and let's say four teenagers that are taking showers every day, long showers, you, they're doing laundry for eight. Uh, they have a sprinkler system, they, they wash the car, wash, what, they wash four cars <laughs> every week or every other week. So you would not want to be subsidizing their water. Uh, you know, in other words, if there was flat rate for everybody and they could use as much as they wanted and you would be paying the same amount as them, that would not seem fair. So that's kind of the way it is in the broadband world because what you consume uh, determines how much it costs the operator. So if they are going to try to average everybody out, they're going to say, well, here's how much bandwidth we need based on what everybody's using, regardless of what they're using. And we have to purchase enough bandwidth back to the backbone with redundancy, right? You don't want just one backbone connection. Plus, all of your equipment needs to be able to support that higher bandwidth. So uh, it's going to cost the ISP more the more usage there is. And in in the past, back in the olden days, uh, the floor for bandwidth usage was very low. So there wasn't much going on. People were surfing the web, you know, and there wasn't much interactivity on the web. There wasn't a lot of media just web pages, basic static web pages. Then there was a little bit more uh, job and stuff came onto the web and the web pages were downloading, downloading more images and ads and stuff. And the bandwidth went up some, but it still was not much, you know, web and email. Um, so the real, the real thing that you had back then consuming bandwidth, if you were an ISP, was peer-to-peer -peer traffic, which would be those peer-to-peer -peer programs like um, BitTorrent, the one I can remember, there were some others that came out before that that uh, were used to share files. And in, in those days, those early days, basically what people were sharing were copyrighted kinds of things that weren't supposed to be up there or, you know, programs that were unlicensed uh, that they would let other people download. And what they were doing was they, you know, they would, sh they would pull that stuff down from other people that were using BitTorrent, for example. Or, and then they would also set their own computer up as a BitTorrent server, and then people would pull that off of their system. So that was where... ISPs really saw the increase in traffic from a small percentage of users. Obviously, not everybody was doing that. Very few people were. But that small percentage of users were using quite a bit of bandwidth. So ISPs were trying to tamp down on that. But the bandwidth floor now, nobody's, I mean, file sharing is probably insignificant compared to what it was back then, number one, because of the floor going up. But also, people don't need to, sh to share movies now. People just go ahead and get... Um, their video entertainment right off of the internet through streaming. So the, the floor is much higher because of all the video streaming that's going on. And what's been increasing that even more now is the fact that there's free services out there. So at first you had Netflix and then you had some others come in there. You had Disney Plus and others come in. And uh, those were all subs subscription kinds of things. People had to pay per month to get that. But the world is also moving in the direction of uh, free TV, again, kind of going you know, full circle uh, with fast services, free ad supported TV. So you've got your um, things like, uh, I think Hulu's got some, but you've also got, uh, who is it? Oh gosh, I can't think of their, can't think of some of them. Um, Roku's got some free stuff. Uh, there's Crackle movies. There's some other big ones out there, Tubi, Tubi TV. Uh, so these are all free things that you can watch. You gotta deal with some ads, uh, usually put in really weird spots. So not the normal place that you'd see an ad, you'll be watching something and right in the middle of a sentence, an ad will pop up sometimes depending on the service you're watching. But these are ad supported kinds of services. So more and more people have cut the cable cord where they're getting, you know, TV delivered over their, let's say a coax cable and not via their broadband connection. And they're downloading it over the broadband connection. So again, more and more usage. So you're seeing that. And because of that, the, the people that are doing more streaming are the ones that are going to want to get a higher speed plan. So we're seeing the effects of that, I think. Uh, it says here, implications for the broadband industry are mixed. 
On the one hand, faster speed adoption often, result, often results in higher ARPU, that's average revenue per user for operators, and increased satisfaction of consumers as they right-size to subscription plans that are al aligned with their actual usage. So um, again, these, these ISPs that are doing usage-based billing, they can offer multiple packages to their consumers. Again, those that don't use that much bandwidth can get a lower price, and uh, usually they have plenty of bandwidth to do what they're doing if they're not doing a lot of streaming. Uh, it's really streaming that's big, causing the biggest influx of, uh, of data use. And then those that need a higher plan, they might be on that lower tier plan and they, they're not happy because they a lot of buffering, uh, so they can go ahead and get a higher tier plan. They generally will get a faster speed and then they'll get um, a higher, a lot of times they'll get a higher data cap plus anything that they pay over that they would pay anything they hit over that they would pay per month. So it's not just, uh, doesn't necessarily have to be usage based from the standpoint of right off the bat, it's usage based. It could be, and I'm not sure if that's how they're defining this, but it could be that you get a certain amount in your plan. And then if you go over, over that, then you get charged usage. Um, one of the, on the other hand, the faster speed adoption often results. I said that, okay. Uh, it says here, on the other hand, operators who have viewed uh, Usage-based billing as a tool to reduce strain on the broadband plant will need to explore new solutions for maintaining and improving network health and alleviating network congestion. So now people, um, they're getting more people uh, subscribing to these usage-based plans and they're using more data. Well, if they're getting more people subscribing, then they are increasing their average revenue per user, which is helping them pay for the additional bandwidth. So, I mean, in some cases, they're okay with that. It's like, we don't mind if we our usage-based billing people are using more data because we're at least getting additional money for that and that will help us uh, invest in the network that we need to do that so it doesn't necessarily mean that these isps are panicking um, because the more uses they get from some of these folks the more revenue they're taking in and that helps them pay for the use that people are doing if they're doing just fixed rate billing and then suddenly lots of their subscribers start using more data that's bad because you get a lot of people that are using a lot of data that are not that are paying the same amount as somebody that's using almost nothing. So that again, doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, again, here, a key reason for this counterintuitive development, internet service providers have migrated more of their usage based customers to higher speeds. That's what they've been trying to do. And again, that's not necessarily bad for them. So they're, what they want to do is provide reasons for people to pay them more money. So uh, as people do more streaming, they're offering these usage-based billing plans and they get these people moved over. And again, they're getting more revenue. People are using the service. It's just like, again, you're going to pay more for your power bill or your water bill if you're using more of that. That doesn't necessarily mean that the power company or the water company is going to be panicking. They just are going to be getting more money from you to help pay for the infrastructure to deliver water to everybody. Um, 90% of usage-based customers are on speed tiers of 200 meg per second or above versus just 63% for flat rate billing subscribers. <clears throat> and again, this is kind of, uh, it's not biased, but it is, this is, this is coming from people that have, <clears throat> excuse me, the service that allows them to do usage-based billing. So uh, that's looking at just that universe and not all of the ISPs that are necessarily, not necessarily using this uh, service. So uh, here we're looking at, we've got first quarter 2021, and this this color here is average usage-based data, and this is average flat rate billing. So again, you're seeing basically the same bar chart we're seeing before where you had for the first time the um, average usage-based billing uh, being a little bit higher as far as usage. But what's interesting here is the increase, what you're looking at here is those that are 200 plus megabits per second or more for both uh, usage-based billing and flat rate billing, uh, usage-based being the darker line. So you can see uh, this was below, the usage-based billing was actually below fixed rate billing as far as 200 megabits per second and above at this point, and it significantly increased compared to what's happened with fixed rate billing. And that makes sense as well, because as I look at it, you know, as these internet service providers upgraded their networks or were able to offer higher speeds, um, when they do that, again, probably what they're doing is uh, as they sign these customers up for usage-based billing plans, they are increasing the speed that the customer can get because they can then recover some revenue for that. It's less dangerous for them. So uh, if, they, if they go out with a gigabit symmetrical plan and they don't have usage-based billing, 
well, you know what? Everybody, the more, the more you give somebody, the more they can eat. And even though people don't necessarily need it, they still will eat more. So take Netflix, for example, or other kind of streaming services. If you, as you increase the, the amount of, of data people can use, those programs are happy to use more data. They'll, they'll use as much as they can. Whereas if you don't do that, they will back off a little bit and the consumer really won't even notice probably the, you know, it's not like the quality is that different on the, on the streaming, but they're going to use those, those programs are going to use more data. Uh, so that's what you're seeing here. So I think what's happening there is that as they are increasing the speeds people can get, they are probably trying to recover some of that and the usage based billing. And again, they're, they're perfectly happy probably if they have their pricing and their costs figured out properly that if people use more, they're paying for their, investment that they're going to need to increase their their infrastructure in order to support that. Uh, less than 20% of U.S. home broadband customers are on speed tiers of under 200 meg, while more than 18% of subscribers now have gigabit sp inter speed internet or faster. And again, this is not looking across the country at everybody. This is looking at uh, people that are using this service. So here's the, you see the 18% of one gig. This is your... Um, what is it, less than 20% here that are below 200 megs. So your sweet spot in here, 200 to 400, and then you've got 500 to 900 just under a meg there that are what they're capable of getting. And as we know, across the country, um, you know, it's going to depend where you are as to what this is really going to look like. And um, the other thing is to keep in mind is if you've got an internet service provider out there, let's say they're, let's say it's a telephone company that's providing DSL service in an area and the most people can get is maybe 50 megabits per second in some areas, and it might be more like 10 megabits per second in areas that are further away from the central office. So they're not able to use that much bandwidth. So they might, they could have the same backbone and infrastructure as another internet service provider, but their customers can't use nearly as much. So um, that's just something, again, to keep in mind that uh, if somebody, you know, in some of these unserved areas, underserved areas, and they have an internet connection, they're not using much bandwidth, and they're probably not on a usage-based billing plan, right? There's no reason to be. They can't use that much bandwidth. It's not that hard for the internet service provider uh, on the back end to keep things where they have enough bandwidth. The hard part for them is the front, end, the front end, the last mile to the customer, and all of that network that needs to be upgraded for them to get faster speeds. So, um, again, this is not indicative of the entire United States. This is internet service providers that are more concerned about tracking their bandwidth. Uh, those that have consumers that they just can't use that much bandwidth, they're just not that interested in tracking it. It doesn't really matter at this point. As soon as they upgrade those customers to fiber and then suddenly, you know, everybody, you know, before people could do 10 megabits per second, 50 megabits per second, then suddenly they upgrade the network to fiber and suddenly everybody can do, and they say, hey, we're going to give everybody a gig, symmetrical. And sort of it, suddenly everybody can do that and bam, their cost skyrocket at that point. And that's when they're going to look at how do we manage this a, this bandwidth use that our network now can't support because we've got all these customers now that are doing much faster speeds. Uh, meanwhile, 17% of all U.S. broadband users now chew through over one terab terabytes one terabyte of data a month, while 3% consume more than two terabytes. So interesting here that it, there's no really significant difference at all between usage-based billing and fixed rate billing. It's, it's about, uh, what is that, about 17%. On the fixed rate billing uh, and about 17% on the usage based billing for one terabyte and it's about 3% for two terabytes on either plan. So there's not really a significant difference there. So power users uh, exist in both places, um, which again for a fixed rate service provider is not a good thing because you could have kind of back in the days I was talking about where you had the uh, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing software, you have a few, a small percentage of people that are really power users that are using a lot of bandwidth uh, and you're charging everybody the same. So that's again, like the family across the street with the eight people using lots of water versus a family of two uh, that uh, don't. So um, usage-based billing, I think makes a lot of sense. I think uh, the best way, if I were running an ISP myself, what I would do is I would have a uh, base plan. I would have a, a low cost plan for those people that really don't use, that don't consume much. I'd have a base plan for people that gives them lots of, I, I, I'd want something that would give them a lot of usage without having them to have pay, have to pay out of pocket for anything additional. And then you'd have a plan or two for your really high cost uh, customers, including maybe one for these super users, uh, these uh, what they call 
monthly power users that people are doing, you know, one, two, three terabytes or more of data, maybe have something just for them so that when they get to that point, they're going to upgrade their service or they're going to say, you know what, I don't want to pay anymore and I don't need to be transmitting all of this data. I'm just going to back down a little bit on my usage. So um, it makes sense from a perspective of managing your business. I know a lot of people don't like that. They think uh, ISPs can afford to provide the same service and all kinds of bandwidth to everybody. But if you've not if you've not managed an ISP or had to deal with that and had to deal with the um, the costs of, of uh, providing the service, then uh, you don't know. But it is there is a cost to providing that service, and the the resource that they're providing is bandwidth. And if you have people um, using that in such a way that it's not um, even, and you're not going to make money off of a certain number of customers, it doesn't make sense because. Uh, why would you do that? Why would you have some customers that are costing you money and have other customers that are paying you way more than they need to? Again, you know, it's like um, it's not like the post office. You know, you can you can pay the same amount to mail a letter to your neighbor right next door or to somebody in Alaska because um, the, the cost of a stamp is averaged across everybody. Um, now, of course, there you wouldn't send you wouldn't mail a letter to your neighbor, but let's say across town, you might want to mail a letter across town or to Alaska, and it costs the same. Why? Because uh, you've got the people, you're subsidizing the really long haul delivery of letters to the ones that are not so long. And that's the way fixed rate or flat rate broadband is. And I think it makes more sense, um, certainly from a, something where you're consuming resources like water, power, broadband, bandwidth to do uh, usage-based billing. And I think more internet service providers will be looking at that, at that because it does make sense to be able to kind of manage that bandwidth a little bit better and then if you've got the people that are really using lots of bandwidth, then they can pay more. And you've got people that are not using as much, they can pay less. Makes sense to me. And again, if you're interested in doing that, uh, check out our website uh, at zcorm.com. Look for Bandwidth Commander. And um, we can help you with that uh, if that's something you're interested in. So check it out. Uh, you see our phone number and our email there as well. So thanks for joining me for Broadband Deployment News today. I appreciate it. I hope you have a good holiday weekend. Uh, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.